Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, today we are going to paint the ceramic tea kettle and we're going to show you how to turn it from this plain old tea kettle to your very own masterpiece. Now we understand that the theme for your party is tropical paradise. So today on the tea kettle, we are going to make a tropical island paradise painting. So today your artist is Miss Heather. She's going to take you through how to turn this into your very own masterpiece. The colors that we gave you were yellow, red, blue, black, white, and green. You can feel free to add more colors. You can feel free to follow along if you like, or you can make it your very own and paint whatever you want on it. Because again, at Coleman Events, we always encourage you to take your creative license and make it your own. So without further ado, here's Miss Heather. Hello all, thanks for coming to paint with me today. So what we're going to do to get us to our island of tropical bliss is start with this big brush. We'll get it wet so that your paint can spread a little better. I'm gonna dab off a little bit of the excess water and I'm gonna start with a nice orange. Um, that's gonna be the main color for our sky. So I'm gonna take a little bit of red mix in with some yellow. And we're going to get an orange. And as you can see there, I'm just mixing them together until I like the color that I see. And that looks like a pretty good orange to me. I'm gonna start at the middle of the tea kettle. Just kind of brush that on going back and forth. And in order to hold it, you might want to put your hand inside of it so that you can turn it and paint all the surface. I'm going to paint this little edge out here too. And we're just kind of making the middle of it orange. Just want to paint all the way around it. I'm going to paint this and of the sides as well, just to keep it uniform going around. You can make the handle whatever color you'd like. If you run out of the orange, you just wanna mix the color again. And it doesn't have to be perfect because different colors of the same type of color make it interesting. So we're painting around the whole middle of the teapot in orange. So right now your teapot should look something like this if you're following along. We'll get this little handle. Right, so we have a nice orange stripe going all the way around our teapot. What we're going to do next 
So at the bottom of this orange stripe, we're going to add in some red. And I'm even going to wash my brush off. I'm just going to go right into the red paint. Add some paint onto this brush and just put some red paint down at the bottom stripe. I'm going to drag the red paint up into the orange stripe, making that fade into the orange just a little bit. That's going to create our sunset. It doesn't have to be all blended in, but do the best you can. Just drag that around. And just bring up your brush into that orange paint and spread the red into the orange a little. You'll see that they blend together a little bit so that you don't see the lines in between the color. It's just a gradual fade. You can wiggle your brush back and forth to help the colors blend. I'm going to paint the whole handle almost red at the bottom until it gets up to the orange. Turn it, get to the other side, handle. And don't forget this little nook and cranny in here. Right. I'm going to go under this too, just to give it a little bit of consistency. All right, so we're getting our red on the bottom, blended it into the orange, if you're following along. Yeah. This, the surface of the teapot really sucks up the paint, so don't be afraid to really put the paint on. It's going to suck right into the surface of the teapot. You, know, you want to just go around and see if you missed any little spaces. Filling that in with white. Right. So we have our orange fade the red teapot. I 
that's getting pretty tropical. I'm going to rinse the big brush into the cup of water. Make sure I get all that red out. Because what I want to do at the top is I want to bring in some yellow. And so since we're going to paint the top, we probably want to hold it from the bottom. And we're going to paint the yellow all around the top. And just like we did with the red, we're going to bring the yellow down into the orange and blend that a little. We may have to take some more orange and blend the yellow in just because the orange is pretty dry. We'll see how it goes. See what it looks like. Let's get the yellow on top first. Going to get all around the top here. Here on this little spout. And I wouldn't worry about any brush strokes because skies are pretty uh, forgiving as far as different textures and patterns in the sky. Just looks like clouds. So just get the paint on there. We're gonna go ahead and grab some more of that orange that we made just to kind of blend the two together. Give it that nice smooth blend. When you get all of the yellow on the top, make sure you got all your little white spots covered. Great. Okay. I got some here. Okay, what we're going to do now is come back in with the orange with that yellow still being wet. Let's kind of make a little area where they're both wet together and blend them in. I'm going to grab some yellow, come back in over that, and blend that. See how that when they're wet, they kind of blend together a little bit better than when they're dry. I'm just going to play with that blending just a little bit. So you like how it looks. And it's okay if you want to get a little bit more of the orange up top. This is your own creation. So I encourage you to do whatever you think looks good. Whatever speaks to you. I'm going to take the orange and the yellow and just blend them together. They're both wet, so they blend pretty easy. If you want to see the lines in the sky, you don't have to blend the paint. You can just let them sit together on the teapot. Here I go then with the yellow. I'm going to come in with some orange. I'm going to blend them together. And we're just going to do that all the way around the teapot. So smooth things out. I'm going to put 
put down some yellow paint right where the orange stops. And then I'm going to grab some orange, put that right where the yellow stops and kind of just glide my brush back and forth just to create a blend. Hopefully you don't see that line anymore. Get a whole different color. Nice orangey yellow. I'm gonna do the same thing here on the handle. I'll go with the yellow, yellow. And I'm not even rinsing my brush when I go in the yellow this time. Blending all around. I'm gonna come back in with some orange. Don't need a whole lot of orange, just a little bit, just to get that yellow looking, a little yellow line blended. Come in with yellow and the orange, we'll just blend them out. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're here to have fun. So don't worry about things looking perfect. It's art and you can't do it wrong. So yeah, here we have our yellow sunset teapot. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna paint and paint the bottom black. So that's gonna be like our little island. So I'm gonna take my hand inside so that I'm careful not to touch the outside. I'm gonna rinse my brush. And we're gonna paint the bottom of this teapot black to create our little island. I'm gonna go all the way around the bottom of it and on the inside. When you just be careful when you're painting that you don't get the black onto the other parts you already painted. If you do, we can either wipe it off while it's still wet and then paint over it when that little spot dries to hide it. So don't worry too much, but it's easiest if you just take your time and paint. It's not a race. Painting the whole outside. It's black. And what we're going to do is create a silhouette of some palm trees coming from this little island. Just a sec. Go in here and start painting this in here. And just keep your brush really close to the bottom. Try not to lift it off of the saucer area. That way you don't get any of the paint onto the teapot. Spread it all around on the inside of the saucer too. It's one side, I'm gonna turn it. Still holding it on the inside. The paint's pretty much dry, so you can touch it. It won't come off on the kettle. If you get a point where it's smudged or you have a fingerprint, you can always Go back in and touch it up when we're done. Okay. 
this little part is going to be tricky down here. So just kind of ease your little brush in. Keeping it real close to the saucer. Don't lift it up at all. Just kind of shimmy it around in there. That way you don't take your brush up off of that saucer and get it onto the top of the teapot. I'm going to do that on the other side too. Let's reload my brush with the black paint. Just kind of shimmy it in there. Being real careful not to get the black on the other part. And no worries if we do. Great. Go around this side. There's a little area here, it's probably going to get on the handle when you paint it. Don't worry. It's not really noticeable if you get it on the handle. Art is never perfect. Sometimes the best art happens when mistakes are made. So don't want to worry about that. Point is to have fun, not worry about anything else, but where are you putting the paint on this teapot right now? Right. So we're almost done here, this bottom part. Just remember to keep your brush real flat on that saucer at the bottom while you're putting that black paint down. Just going back and forth, that way you don't hit your teapot. Great. Don't forget about the bottom. At least that bottom lip, because when it's sitting down on the counter, you're going to see most of this bottom part still. Just be careful when you get close to the teapot not to dab it with some black. If you do, though, we'll fix it later. Now, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget that this is a ceramic teapot. It's actually a flower pot shaped like a teapot. So you can plant whatever flowers, those tea plants you would like in there now and just see how they grow and flourish just in time for the new school year. On that note, you probably want to add some rocks to the bottom just because this doesn't have a lot of good drainage. Um, so put a layer of rocks and then put your soil down so that the water can drain away from the roots. Alrighty. Okay, so we have our island on the bottom of our teapot. Now we're going to figure out where we're going to put some palm trees on here. You can put your palm trees anywhere. I see I got, even I got a little black spot on my teapot. So what I'm going to do is that's where I'm going to put a palm tree. So that's what happens in art. You kind of make mistakes and then we make art out of our mistakes. Nobody will never know the difference. So I'm gonna take the little brush because this is gonna be smaller line work that we're doing. Right where I had that little dot of black mistake, I'm going to make a tree trunk. And I'm just gonna figure out, I'm gonna start it at the bottom. And I'm gonna bring it up.
and bring a little curve to it. And keep in mind, if it looks like your paint isn't spreading well, maybe reload it with some new paint or dip your brush into the water a little bit because acrylic paint spreads better when there's a little water involved. And I'm going to draw a line, a curved line for the tree trunk. And this is going to be perfect. And however your tree trunk turns out is, you know, probably best that you embrace that tree trunk because it's your art. And my tree trunk isn't going to look like your tree trunk. And your tree trunk isn't going to look like your friend's tree trunk. Everybody's original. All right, so I've got pretty decent tree trunk here. You got a little curve. So we're gonna figure out where the palm tree branches are gonna come in. So palm trees have little branches that kind of go out to the side. So we're gonna make one that's gonna go this way. Right now, I'm just gonna make it a line. And then I'm going to balance it out on the other side and do the same line the other way. And then I'm going to do another line coming up. And Another little line coming down here, kind of mimicking the same line on the other side. I'm going to put one all off to the side up at the top. So here we have one palm tree. Now that we have that palm tree, I think I'm gonna add a, another little guy here. Now that we have the palm tree, um, let's make it look like it has some little leaves on it. And we're just gonna take the little brush and make little lines to make it look like it has teeth. These are like the palm tree leaves. They don't have to be perfect. Just dab in a little dots at the end of the leaves so that you can see that it's a palm tree. I'm going to do that to all the little palm tree branches. Get some more paint. Come back in, finish my little palm tree teeth. <laughs> Are you able to see pretty good what we're doing? So I'm just making little notches coming out of the little branch here. They don't have to be perfect, just to show some texture on the tree branch. Got one more left. 
So I don't know about you, but I've never only seen one palm tree in any setting. So I'm going to pick a spot. Maybe you can start thinking about where you want your next palm tree while you're finishing up this palm tree. You don't have to do the same design or placement that I'm doing. Make it your own, wherever you want your happy little tree to be. That's where it should be. All right, so one palm tree down. I think I'm gonna bring this one over here. I'm gonna probably put it right here. I'm gonna check and see if I have any other black spots. I can make palm trees, not yet. All right, so I'm gonna take and get some more paint on my little brush. And I'm going to come in over here really close to this other side. Keep in mind that when it's sitting on the table, what you're going to see. I'm going to start way down here. If you can see that. I started down here. I'm going to make it bend in the opposite direction towards the other tree. Like he's going to try and say hi to the other tree. So I have my palm tree trunk. And now I'm going to add in the branches, just like we did before. I'm adding a little water on my brush because my brush was getting a little dry and the paint was hard to spread just a little bit. All right, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pick where our palm tree branches are going. I'm going to put one little line here coming out here. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Feel free to turn the teapot so that your hand is going in a natural direction. That might help you guide the brush a little better. Dip my paintbrush in the paint again and get some more. I'm gonna go a little down further and draw another little line there. Kind of looks like a whale tail coming out. <laughs> you could draw whale tails. Maybe we'll do one on the back just for for giggles. We have a whole back of the teapot that we can practice on too. You can have one side where you experiment on, and that's the side you show everybody when you set it down. And you hide the other side that you messed up. <laughs> Not every piece of art makes it in a museum. So as long as you're having fun and you're winning. All right, so we have our palm tree arms, branches. Now we're gonna give them little texture, little palm tree teeth, just like we did before. I'm just gonna go in with a little brush and just dab little notches in. Making it look a little bit more like a palm tree. I'm going to do that for every palm tree branch that we made. And almost done. And another one.
these guys. So we have some palm trees living here. And while I was painting the palm trees, I think I'm going to put the sun in the middle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick a spot in the sky to put the sun. And what I'm going to do first is do it in white. So I dry off this little brush. And so we'll go into some white and I'm doing white so that we can make it a little brighter than the background when it's all said and done. And I think I'm going to put it right here. So let's come in like this and draw a circle. Start small because that way, if you need to adjust the lines on the outside of your circle, you have a little bit of room to do so. Or this could even be the starts of the night moon, whatever you want to make it in your world, because you're the creator, you can make it whatever you want. That's the beauty of being a painter, an artist, you're a creator, make your own little world. Um, don't worry if your son. It's a perfect circle. Mine's not either. You can see that there's little edges that are a little rough. That just gives it character. So I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and we'll go back in and give it some color. Right, so right now we have our palm trees on this side. So on the other side, we can do whatever we like. You could write a phrase. We could do a whale tail coming out of the water if we want. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. We can we can do a whale tail. Um, I haven't done one. So let's see what we can do. All right. So whale tail is going to be circle here or a little wiggly line. I'm going to make it big. That's one side. And the fun part about doing silhouettes is that you don't really have to do a lot of detail work. Um, you just make the idea of a shape, and especially with art, and then your mind and whoever's viewing your art next will kind of make their own interpretation of it. This could even be a mermaid tail. This could be any sea creature with a tail. How about that? And so we're painting in that. Keep in mind, you don't have to do a whale tail on the back. You could do, you know, uh, some words like, you know, it's always island time or anything that you'd want to have a little message. No worries, mom. Yeah, <laughs> or don't worry, be happy. Or somewhere it's five o'clock. <laughs> happy hour. Good vibes only. Possibilities are endless. And don't forget you have other colors too if you want to add some other colors to your sunset, say if you wanted your sunset to be purple, then you could use blue instead of the yellow. Like your red to make the purple. Just the color combinations are endless. Or you can make the tail blue. 
yeah, we can put a little bit of blue in it to make it fun. Once this black dries, I'll show you how. All right, so we got a whale tail kind of popping up out the water. In our island, tropical oasis getaway. All right. Be some abstract going on. I mean, you could do designs on this side. You could do anything you want. So now that we're back here, oh, I'm going to touch this. This is pretty dry. And we're going to rinse all of the black out of our brush. Dab it on the paper towels. Make sure your water should be pretty clear. And I'm going to come in and get a little bit of yellow and go right over the sun with the yellow. And see that the white is on the bottom, it makes the yellow a little bit brighter. And it differentiates the sun from the sky just a little bit. All right, so put the sun there. I'm also gonna, just to give it a little depth, grab some orange I had left over just a little bit kind of go around the edges a little bit. Blend that in and then grab some more yellow. You can make your sun orange if you wanted, more orange. You can do that by adding a little bit of red. I'll show you how to do that while we're working. Just to make it a little round, appear round and not flat. You can play with it. And so you like the color, put some more yellow. All right. I kind of like how my sun's looking there. And what tropical sky is not complete without some birds? Everybody knows how to do these birds. Don't be shy. We've all done them since kindergarten. We're going to take a small brush, get a small amount of black paint. We're going to put our little bird flying in the sky. Probably do some over here just to bring the eye over here a little bit. So I did one little line. I don't know if you could see. So we'll do another little line over here. The little M birds we used to do in kindergarten. And touch that line up a little bit. And I'm going to do another one. So, you know, the closer the things are to you in the picture, the bigger they are. So these birds are kind of far away. So I'm going to do them tiny, tinier than this one. I'm just going to maybe put one over, over this way. Really tiny. He's flying away. All right. So you could make more palm trees going all around. Um, you could do whale tail on the back. You could do some letters. You could do anything that you'd like in your tropical oasis. Um, but yeah, so we can't wait to see what you do with your teapots. Um, definitely post some good picks for us to follow on your social medias. Definitely want to see all the plants. Even if you don't start seeds, you can cheat and just go buy a plant, stick in there. So I hope you enjoyed painting with us, um, creating your tropical oasis. And you can follow us on Coleman Events. Here's all of our social media stuff.
let me see if I can get it up here. There we are. And thanks for stopping your busy life to create. Try to do it more often. It's so much fun. <laughs>